The Fury of Dracula Digital Edition is here. We've got an advanced copy of the game and we're going to check it out right now. Let's take a look at the tutorial to see how the game plays and see what you're in for. This is Legendary Tactics. Start with the general tutorial, get the basics. Yeah, this looks really cool. We, uh, at Legendary Tactics, we love focusing on the digital ports of the games. So let's see how this one stands up. Welcome to the Fury of Dracula, a one versus many game of gothic horror and hidden evil. Sounds promising. Four vampire hunters use their powers of deduction to chase the elusive Dracula across Europe and thus end his reign of terror. Ah oh, yes, this is reminiscent of Scotland Yard. Dracula will use hidden movement to avoid the hunters while slaying deadly traps and spawning new vampires along his trail. The hunters will win if they find and destroy Dracula before his influence engulfs Europe. Oh good, so the game is actually an asymmetric one, where the hunters have a different win condition than Dracula. Dracula wins if he accumulates 13 influence points by creating new vampires and defeating the hunters. Ooh, very thematic. The game is played over a series of rounds, with each round having a hunter phase followed by a Dracula phase. Each hunter phase contains both a day and a night, where the hunters can perform different actions. During the Dracula phase, Dracula moves across Europe as he leaves terror in his wake. Ooh, he's biting his victims as he goes. As he travels, Dracula leaves behind a trail which the hunters can discover to track him down. Oh neat, so you look for the victims and then you will find the problem. Check out the rest of our tutorials to learn how to play the game or the in-game manual for more advanced rules. We'll continue. So a good hunter needs to understand their tools, so in this tutorial we'll go through all the information the game will present you with. So the game board split into seven regions, Austro-Hungary, Baltica, Britannica, Gallia, Germania, Iberia, and Italia. Regions contain a number of cities, the larger square-based locations in town, the smaller diamond-shaped locations. All cities and towns are connected by roads, the red lines, and railways, which are the white and yellow striped lines. Ah, so I presume white and yellow are just sort of different tickets that you need. Cities and towns that are on the coastline are ports. These are represented by a blue base. Aha, uh -huh, yes. I like when a game's intuitive like that. The camera button allows the selecting. Automatic mode, good. You can zoom in if you like, you can zoom out. Here's the action bar. These are all of your actions. Here's the menu, the move action. You can move by um, road, rail, or boat. Pass, skip your turn, that's weak. Reserve ticket action draws a train ticket, which you'll need to use trains. Ah, so this is going to be a bit of resource collection in order to uh, get the moves in hand that you need to track him down. The rest action allows you to recover one point of damage from the current hunter. Oh, very cool. Search action reveals an encounter card. If the search location is on Dracula's trail, we'll get to that later. The special action activates a hunter's special ability. Ah, so this is a little bit like Pandemic, where each character has their own unique abilities. It allows a hunter to use cards from their hand if they can do so. The supply action draws event and item cards for you to use. The trade action allows you to trade items between hunters. Yes, that does sound a little like Pandemic. Probably one of the characters will have a trade advantage. This is the current hunter's hand area, so any cards and tickets you have collected will be kept there. These are card items. These cards are useful tools that the hunters can use to balance the odds in their favor. These are event cards. They represent events in the game that happen during the hunt. Most hunters can only hold a maximum of three item and three event cards in their hand. However, John Seward's ability increases the maximum to four of each. That's his bonus. Dracula can't see your items unless you have been bitten. Very cool. So. Essentially, if he's bitten you, he almost gets an insight into your mind and can see what, what you're able to do. So you have to reveal one card per active bite. Unfortunately for Mina Harker, poor Mina Harker, who always has one bite, she must always have one card revealed. That's an interesting mechanic, I really like that actually. Here's the game clock, which shows what the current phase is as you play, I presume this is day, day phase. It changes, so the look of the game will also change, spooky. Uh, here we are. The phases are dawn, day, dusk, night, and the Dracula phase. So I believe we have dawn and day for 
the hunters. Dracula is for Dracula, and knight, I think, is for the battles. Yes. Correct. And the Dracula phase is for Dracula. Good. The game clock shows the level of despair, which is equal to the number of weeks that have passed. Ah, uh, yes, you get more forlorn as you aren't able to capture Dracula. Ooh, okay, let's set up a game of Fury of Dracula. So we've got the setup phase. The hunters and Dracula get placed. They're always placed in this order. And Dracula comes last. So let's place the hunters. We'll start with Lord Godalming. Sure, let's get him in Belgrade. All right, John Seward. So I guess we should probably spread these guys out a bit. So let's get him over here in France. Ben Helsing. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to get him up in Britain. And Mina Harker. Ooh, do I go Italy or Spain? I think I could converge on Italy with these two. So let's get her in Granada. Or no, a little more central. Dracula is controlled by the AI, so he'll be placed automatically. Once everyone's been placed, we can begin the game. Well, that sounds promising. Welcome to the first game round. One round consists of all five phases. As a hunter, your aim is to find and defeat Dracula, so let's get moving. That sounds good. Three options, carriage, train, and boat. Carriage is by road, and you can only travel one space at a time. Train allows movement by railway, but you need a rail ticket, and it'll show how far you can move and which railways you can travel. So this is presumably the quicker way to travel, but it may come, uh, you, you lose mobility because you're traveling farther. Boat allows you to travel to and, and between sea regions. Good, and you can only move to a sea region from a port or a blue city and vice versa. That makes sense. Since Dracula is on land, let's move by road. Select the carriage option from the action bar. Notice how all the possible locations you can move are highlighted. Select one of the highlighted locations to move there. Yeah, sure, let's go to Bucharest. Not entirely sure why I'm moving at this point. I don't really know where Dracula is, so... Great, you've taken your first step in the hunt for Dracula. Hunters can only move during the fa day phase, unless a card effect states otherwise, and moving is the only way to find Dracula. Choose your path wisely. All hunters are human-controlled in this tutorial, so let's repeat this action for all the hunters. John Seward is next. Select the move, then carriage options from the action bar. Move, carriage. Sure, let's go a little towards Italy. Get into a good location. And again for Van Helsing. Move, carriage. I'm going to position him ready to come across the channel. Okay. And Mina, let's move you by carriage as well. Ah, let's get you out here in Lisbon. Once all the hunters have acted, the phase changes to the dusk phase. Since Dracula is hidden and no hunter has any event cards, the game progresses straight to the night phase. During the night phase, hunters can make another action. However, you cannot move during the night. Okay, so this is a non-movement phase. Since we can't move, we should prepare for the next day phase. A rail ticket will allow us to move faster and cover more ground. Great idea. Let's get one. Reserve ticket. Lord Godalming got one. Oh, good. I can move two squares on either. That looks promising. Maximum tickets you can have is two. Reserving more tickets and you can hold will require you to discard one before drawing a new one. Okay, that seems like a waste. When we eventually find Dracula, we'll need tools to defeat him. We can prepare for this by gathering some supplies. Oh, wow. Okay. That's cool. So a little bit like a zombie fest where you have to tool up first. Select the supply option. Aha. Supplying is the only way to get a new item. Uh, just like with rail tickets, Lord Godalming gets to draw an extra item card when supplying. Okay. Hunters can only hold three items and three events at any time, except Dr. John Seward, who may hold up to four using his passive ability. If a hunter draws more items or events than they can hold, then they must discard some cards of their choice. 
Each hunter will need their own tools. Let us supply with Van Helsing. Choose the supply action from the action bar. That is the little baggie. And, ooh, he's getting a rifle. I really like the sound of that. Although, against a vampire, maybe a stick would be better. For this tutorial, you'll be playing as both the Hunters and Dracula, so this is how we can properly show you how combat works. Okay, this should be useful. If a hunter is in the same city as Dracula at dawn or dusk, then combat will begin. Dracula is in Rome. Let's move Mina Harker there now to start combat. Okay. There we go to Rome. Dracula has been revealed. Oh, that's a nice cinematic there. Makes it feel very imminent. Okay, we'll talk you through how combat works. In this game, you have a hand of cards that represent the options. I can dodge. You always can dodge. You can punch and you can escape. That is good to know. So, I'm not sure punching a vampire is going to do much good for me, but if you have any item cards in your inventory, you'll be able to use them in combat too. Find and select the punch card. Excellent. <laughs> the one thing I don't want to do to a vampire. <laughs> All right, Mina, give him a whack. Oh, and he's got claws. So, suffers two damage then. If this is knight, choose any hunter in this combat to suffer two damage. That doesn't look good. Find a select the fangs card. Oh boy, he can escape as a bat, that's cool. All right, fangs it is. Two damage. Oh no, he is gonna bite me a second time. Or Mina. You can already see the veins on her face. Okay, we've chosen our cards. They'll be revealed. Let's see the cards in action. Okay. Punch versus fangs. Oh no! Disgusting. Oh, that is nasty. Oh boy, but he takes a good shot. <laughs> I like the cinematic there. That's fun. Okay, so, if any icons on Dracula's card matches an icon on the Hunter's card, then Dracula's card is cancelled. Oh, okay, so he had the teeth. Any cards that weren't cancelled then resolves their effects, including combat damage. So, see how you can't use the punch card this round? When a Hunter uses a card, it won't be available for the next round. Good. Find and select the dodge card. There it is. Oh, wow, it's got lots of different symbols there. So that seems like a wise choice when I'm not really well equipped. Okay. Ooh, the plotting card. Mesmerize. Cool. You can suffer one fewer damage from a hunter's weapon. That's neat. Plotting. So search your combat deck for one card of your choice, then place the chosen card in your hand and shuffle the combat deck. Okay, so it's a way to mill your deck a bit. Keep this card face up until the end of combat. You may flip this card face down to cancel the engaged Hunter's Punch, Dodge, or Escape. Oh, so they both have actions to combat each other. That's cool. Plotting versus Dodge. Okay, so I dodged uselessly while he plotted. I should have been trying to punch him or something. Search the deck for Escape as Mist card and select it. Okay, that ends. So that's available to him for the next round. That's cool. So you sort of prepare your deck to improve your skills. Combat continues like this until all the hunters of Dracula escapes or is defeated. Remember, if you plan on taking down Dracula, you'll need to be prepared for combat. All right. Ooh, let's see my other options here. I'm just gonna punch him. He's got 14 health, but let's keep doing that. I think Mina's gonna die here before Dracula dies, so that's that's probably not good. Oh yes, I. Uh, 
No, he's a big guy. He can take the hit. <laughs> oh boy. Poor Mina. She is just getting devoured here. Oh boy. Yeah, she is on death's doorstep. <laughs> Did a single bit of damage. You know what? She's she's done a good job though, so but I think it's time for her to escape. <clears throat> this is not going well for Mina Harker. And he is looking pretty confident, so I think in his shoes I would be hitting her with the fangs again. Let her go because I feel bad for her. Oh man, she really took some damage there. Oh, the music is nice too. Add some intensity there. Let me go to the combat round. Very cool. And I'll take over from here to show you some Dracula basics. And uh, this is. Uh, Kind of, I guess, the asymmetrical part of this uh, of this game. Um, so when the hunters have finished performing their night actions, the Dracula phase begins. And this uh, this game has been kind of intriguing for me to. I've, I've read some reviews about it, and it was um, you know kind of on my radar a little bit. But uh, I think it was out of print at the time when I kind of was investigating. So it's nice that they made a digital edition. I'm excited to try it. Um, constantly chased by the hunters, Dracula leaves misery in his wake as he recruits supporters, creates vampires, and warps the forces of nature. Um, during each Dracula phase, uh, Dracula moves and then places an encounter card at the location he has moved to, and he cannot pass. He has to move every every time. So um, you got to plan your route uh, to keep away from the hunters and uh, try and. Uh, uh, basically, you know, run out the clock, I guess. Um, so we'll play a, a few rounds as Dracula and see how this goes. So when moving across the map, uh, Dracula can use carriages and boats to move by road and by sea, but cannot move by railway. I guess they uh, refuse to sell them tickets. And uh, so we click on move. And let's go from Paris to Nantes, say. And uh, Dracula is hidden from the hunters and only revealed when a hunter moves to the location where Dracula is or uh, if Dracula moves to a hunter's location. So even though we can see him move, the hunters cannot. And so we're going to be dropping a card in our, in our wake uh, on the trail. And uh, we choose an encounter card and places it face down at that location of the trail. Dracula cannot place an encounter card if he is currently revealed or is at sea. So we look through the uh, encounter cards to find the Reckless Vampire. And this guy's kind of scary. I've seen this graphic before. And ah! and uh, anyway, uh, so we're going to drop that card uh, down. And we get bats um, as a replacement. And that's the end of our turn. And now we've got two locations in the trail. The leftmost location is always where Dracula is. And the previous locations... Uh, basically everything slides to the right and uh, every time Dracula arrives at a new location it just moves over so and once it's moved over too far then it triggers uh, the, the bottom half of the card which is a more powerful event so on a space where uh, there's a card on it becomes a hideout and you cannot remove to a uh, move back to a hideout uh, that's on the trail so no doubling uh, doubling back which is very different from Scotland Yard where that's key um, if there's already six hideouts on the trail when this happens, the hideout on the six space is matured, and I'll touch on that later. Um, so we'll end the turn and uh, select the pass phase here on the action bar. The guys move around, and Van Helsing's getting some stuff now and uh, getting some rumors and what have you. And now we need to move uh, by C and get him out to uh, C here. All right, that's my turn. So now we wait, wait for the hunters to make their move. They're moving around searching for me, but they're not going to find me. So that's good. 
Moving around, moving around. Perfect. So now in night phase, they're picking up some cards, doing some actions. And uh, hired scouts. So I got to reveal a couple of location cards, etc., etc. So um, yeah, so the the uh, the hunters play out their turn, move around, and use their special uh, uh, abilities. I get a, a card um, as a result of uh, the supply uh, action. Now I'm going to move to uh, Le Havre, move into this port. And yep, there he goes. Had to double click. And uh, we're going to place the encounter card at the Havre. We'll just throw down a hoax. And now there's three hideouts on the trail, including the C uh, one. Um, and uh, you can select any of the hideouts during your turn and see the location uh, and the encounter cards there. And we'll finish our turn. And then basically, yeah, we're just trying to like stay hidden, <clears throat> trying to stay, uh, you know, trying to keep the the trail secret long enough so that uh, the, um, you know, basically so that uh, those those events can all mature and the the uh, negative effects can can really hit. Because a lot of those I haven't seen a lot of the cards, but. Um, it seems like if a card matures and you play the stronger event, usually it results in influence um, on your um, on your part as Dracula. So that means you're moving closer to victory. So you're really just trying to run out the clock, um, as it is in, uh, like, say, Scotland Yard. Um, Dracula can move by sea, but it is risky to do so. There's only 10 sea locations compared to 60 land locations. So the hunters have an increased chance of deducing Dracula's location. Despite the risk, taking a boat can be a good tactical move to travel far away from the searching hunters. Um, so we're going to do the move out into the English Channel. And uh, we get the, the blue card goes down, so they're uh, alerted to the fact that I'm out at sea. And when I move to a, from a port to a sea zone, it suffers two damage. I guess that's crossing moving water. So when moving from a sea zone to another sea zone, it's one damage. So that's not good. Um, so take a, take some some hits moving around the the water but um, yeah it's it's gonna be interesting to see on how much information you know again to compare it to Scotland Yard if you see a couple taxis and a bus you know you can you know you need to reveal to know where Dracula is so in this case I mean the hunters are kind of roaming blind it's okay they've moved Dracula's moved to two sea locations but I mean, I mean, there's less locations, but how do you deduce from that where uh, Dracula might be? And it's to me, it's not that obvious. But anyway, we'll see uh, how this plays out. So our turn again, move to London, place another encounter card there. So move and go to London and we'll throw down uh, the new vampire on that space. And we get another rats card. The trail's filling nicely. Filling up nicely with some deadly hideouts. Good work. And uh, that's where we want to be. And they're going to move around. They're nowhere near. <clears throat> they have no idea where I am. Now, and this is a, where I could see Mina Harker's uh, ability of being able to sense whether Dracula is in the same region as long as she's with a hunter um, is a good thing. So, uh, so in fact, Mina Harper's the only one within... Uh, any uh, proximity of me right now so and they invoke a card and do some passing and uh, get some supplies he has to discard because he's got too many and let's head north through England and travel through Manchester so Mina is hot on our trail so we're going to go up to Manchester <coughs> and we're going to leave behind an aristocratic vampire because at least that might slow uh, Mina down. So 
And the trail is now full of hideouts, and Dra Dracula's power will start to increase dramatically soon. I'm going to click on Finish ac Action. And they're moving around, moving around. Mina's the only one with any proximity to me, and I mean, it, without a reveal, it'd be interesting to see if, um, you know, how easy it is going to be to track Dracula down. I guess there's six cards in his wakes so who gives you some idea. You can probably stumble upon it, but um, but anyway, you cannot ambush in Le Havre with a hoax, which is too bad. And there's some cards receiving. But I think cooperatively, if you have a group to play, especially if you have five players for this, it could be really, you know, in, in, a, in a similar way to uh, Scotland Yard, it can be a really fun puzzle and uh, tracking down Dracula could be very good. Um, but it, you can see how the combat and everything kind of, and with the event cards and everything, it just kind of takes things up a notch from... Um, you know, where Scotland Yard might have left off. So, all right. So, um, the next Dracula phase. So, Mina Harker's delayed, so she misses a turn, which is perfect. And when we, ne when we next move to a location, location where we started the game, Paris will slide off the right of the trail to make room for the new location. And when a location with an encounter card slides off the trail, the encounter card matures. There's no encounter card under the Paris card, so this will not happen yet. Move to Liverpool. All right, and what should we leave behind? Uh, let's, I don't know, let's drop the bats. I like the animation of, of these cards here, it's pretty cool. So the Paris hideout is now gone, and here comes the bite right now. Um, <clears throat> so the encounter card at Nantes will mature during the next Dracula phase, so that is good. So reveal this location card, advance the influence track by four, and then it clears out some of the hideouts. So it shortens the, the trail and going to be harder to find because they did not do what they needed to do in tracking me down quickly enough. So, um, but I don't know if it's uh, revealed. I guess when the trail, when the cards mature, I guess actually that lets you know roughly where Dracula has been, which is probably your your main clue. So you're not totally wandering around in the dark. Um, so once you know, now you have to suffer some effects. But ultimately, <clears throat> if you are, um, you know, you're you're trying to track down Dracula, and it's probably worth suffering some effects. But now I have four influence. I only need thirteen to win. Move to Swansea and watch what happens when an encounter card slides off the right and read the, the bottom half of the card when it appears. So, um, where's Swansea? Oh, there we are. And we'll drop, I don't know, rats. Do some damage there. So, most encounter cards have a matured effect shown in the red box at the bottom of the card. The effect of the reckless vampires to increase... Uh, Dracula's influence by four, which has already, um, which had already happened. Um, so that is good. Um, so yeah, if they, if they now you lose some parts of the trail, which makes Dracula harder to find. Uh, it also means that the um, encounter card that drops, it's going to be a few more turns before another encounter card drops off. So you can't totally just uh, pummel the hunters turn after turn after turn. The uh, encounter cards are only gonna happen every um, few turns. So that's uh, kind of an interesting, uh, interesting thing. And the influence track can advance in the following ways. Maturing a vampire, encounter card advances influence by the number shown on the card, resolving the fangs combat card against a mesmerized hunter. Pretty specific situation. And defeating a hunter in combat advances the influence track by two plus one for each level of despair. Dracula will lose if he takes 15 damage. And you now know the basics of, ev of evading the hunters and spreading fear across Europe. So um, so I hope uh, this uh, gave you a, a good idea of how Fury of Dracula works and uh, how the digital app works. And uh, overall, I think uh, this is going to be um, this is 
you know, this is going to be a good one. This, especially if you get, uh, you know, some uh, players together and you can meet online and uh, and chat at the same time, could be a lot of fun. So, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm NATO with Legendary Tactics, and uh, previously um, you heard from uh, Randall. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.